Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to uh, clean up your head in Mesh Mixer. So you should already have scanned yourself with Reconstruct Me and save that file as an STL, and hopefully also have Mesh Mixer on your desktop. So um, the assignment in Schoology kind of walks you through those basic steps. And there's also this PDF that walks you through with like pictures too, if you'd rather do that than watch this video. So I'll actually have that opened up here. Um, to kind of walk through as well. So, for, so what it's gonna kind of look like at the end is um, this model. So you can see she has no holes, she's kind of flat on the bottom, um, really smoothed out. So that's what it'll look like at the end. But to start, um, you're gonna wanna find your mesh mixer shortcut that you created and open that up. And then uh, you can click import. And hopefully in your network folder, you saved your head. So I am gonna use this one. And I'm gonna open it up. So once it is opened, um, there are a couple of steps to follow. So and you can see this model, she has a hole in her head, her hair is kind of messed up, the bottom is really ragged. So first we're going to delete any unwanted things. So if you have little specks in the air that um, you don't want, um, we can delete those. Like there's this little speck over here that we want to delete. So to do that, you're going to use the select tool. And I like using the lasso because it's a little bit easier. And I'm just going to draw a circle around what I want to delete. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to press the delete button. Not the backspace button, the delete button. And that got rid of that little floating speck. So next we're going to create a flat model or flat bottom to our model. So that's under edit and plain cut. So what this does, um, there are these little arrows. You're only gonna want to use this blue one. And as I click and drag it up and down, you can see what is like ghosted get smaller and bigger. So wherever um, I kind of leave it, so if I put it here, all the stuff under here is going to get deleted. And that actually looks pretty good. Um, so you're gonna wanna go to at least where like you don't have jagged stuff. And the higher you go, technically the bigger you will 3D print, but you don't wanna just do your head. That'll make it more difficult later. So kind of from like just under the shoulders up, looks pretty good. So once you are happy with it, you can click accept. If for some reason you clicked a different color and your plane is kind of crazy, um, you can just click cancel and go back in and it should reset for you. All right, so we have a flat bottom. Next, we need to make our model solid so it doesn't have those holes underneath her chin on the top of her head. So still in that edit box is make solid. And you just click it and it's gonna try and fill all the holes there we go. So it doesn't look the best on top of her head, but we'll clean that up later. Uh, next thing is we're going to inspect our model. So that's just under this analysis and inspector. And you can see all of these little colored specks are all issues that it finds and sees. So you're just going to click auto repair all. And for some reason it made her whole not solid or her head a whole again so I'm just gonna go back to edit to make solid again and that should fill her in there we go so the next part is where it's a little bit more up to you what you do so our sculpting of ours so this is where you're going to want to 
clean up any of like these weird bumps and make yourself look a little bit more normal, especially the top of your head is probably funky and maybe part of your hair. So underneath this sculpt button, you're going to get a toolbar that has all of these different brushes in it and you can kind of play around with them. My two that I kind of stick with is Bubble Smooth and Shrink Smooth. So I'm gonna start with Bubble Smooth and you can um, change how strong the brush is, the size, how deep it goes. I'm gonna see just how it does right now. So if I just click and hold and go over the top of her head, you can see it kind of starting to smooth out. Um, there is a weird little bump there and if I kind of click on it, it'll start to fill in. You don't want to like smooth it out too much that you lose texture because you can really see like the difference because the texture is what will make it look really cool um, when you 3D print and make it look like a head. So I kind of fixed the top of her head. She kind of has a weird bump. So that's where shrink comes in and that can reduce those bumps a little bit. So I'm also going to use shrink smooth on this little piece of hair in here. And, and I could probably make this a little bit smaller. And bring that chunk of hair in. So it doesn't look so crazy. She also has a little bit of hair or something over here. So just using that shrink smooth, I can smooth that out. And you can decide how much detail you want to go into. So one thing you're going to want to look at when you're 3D or getting ready to 3D print is some of like these like really skinny pieces of hair or you. Um, it might not be able to print that and it might cause an issue with how it looks. So I'm just going to chop off her hair and kind of smooth it out there and make her hair just kind of come in a little bit kind of fix that chunk. Uh, I'm going to go back to my smooth and kind of smooth out that part. All right, so you can decide how much detail you want to go into. You're not going to want to mess with your face too much. Hopefully you look pretty normal. Um, if you take like your bubble smooth and like make it really big, you can like fully get rid of your face and then that's not going to look like you when you 3D print. Uh, undo that. Um, if you ever do something that you don't want to do, control Z on your keyboard is how you can just quickly undo something. So that's what I did to fix the face there. So when you are all done, there is two steps you're going to do to save this. And uh, it's spelled out really clearly in that document that I showed you at the beginning of this video. But here it is also, um, if you want to go back and screenshot or whatever, just follow along what I'm going to show you here. So. First, we're going to go File, Save As, and so this one I call, this was Scanned Head Example to begin with. This is probably like your name, head. I'm going to call this, oops, Edited, this is actually um, a student named Carissa, so I'll just do that, Edited Carissa, uh, two, because I already have one in there. So that way, if I do need to go back and fix something, um, I have this file that I've already cleaned up. I don't have to clean it up again. And just make sure it's going into your network space. So making sure that it has your username up in that corner. So I'm going to click Save. So that's the first step. And then to get it ready to 3D print, we're going to go File, Export. And I'm going to also put it in my network spot just so it's in a safe spot that if my computer crashes, I can still get it. I don't have to go through this again. And I'm going to call it uh, maybe 3D print head so I know which one it is. And what's really, really important is that you change this file type to that STL binary. So STL binary, give it a good name so you know which one is your final one, or maybe you call it final head, 3D head, so you're ready to you know which one you can grab to 3D print. And again, it is in my network folder, so it's always there in case I need to go back and grab it again. I don't have to go through any of these steps all over. 
and I'm gonna click save. So then from there, you are ready to get your head ready to 3D print.